The planetary boundaries aim to quantify critical Earth system processes that are required for humanity to thrive. Functional diversity is one of these boundaries and has not been clearly defined or quantified. It describes an ecosystem that contains highly functioning, biotic and abiotic systems that contribute toward a diverse ecosystem. Functional diversity is of ecological importance because it is the component of diversity that influences ecosystem dynamics, stability, productivity and nutrient balance. Without functional diversity, life-sustaining earth processes will begin to fail, which will lead to the degradation of the earth system and humanity. Effects will be seen through loss of food sources, loss of energy sources, anarchy and disease. Identifying the real challenges that face functional diversity and quantifying the impacts on a scale that is relevant to this generation while inspiring change is difficult. Water is a vital component of ecosystems. Output water from mines contains heavy metals and chemicals used for various processes, rendering it unsuitable for use by most biotic organisms. Other major issues caused by mining are anthropogenic habitat alteration and emissions which are intrinsically linked by a positive regression. Backfill and planting are viable options where we decouple the negatives such as deep mining influenced salinity and decreases in CO2 sequestration. We maintain resource acquisition to be used sparingly for high value, preferably reusable, technical feedstocks. Is the material to be mined necessary? This is what we should first be asking. For example, studies have shown the silk of the Darwin's bark spider to be exceptionally well suited in place of steel. Plus, it is comprised of non-synthetic, safe, renewable biological nutrients. Biological systems can also be mimicked for water purification. Mangrove forests have unique physical traits that allow them to flourish in the intertidal zone. Mangroves prevent coastal erosion, provide a buffer from extreme weather events, assist with carbon storage, and are a natural water purification system. The plants decompose and become one of the first layers of an intricate food web. The roots act as a nursery for aquatic life, providing the surrounding lands and waters with fish, birds, and small mammal populations. The functional diversity in ecosystem services face three main threats, such as overuse, like that of commercial aquaculture ponds, direct deforestation and land use change, and by nearby industrialization and urbanization, which leads to pollution, runoff, and habitat loss. Solutions to the degradation have included economic evaluations, improving understanding of this system, and having this knowledge affect policy and decision-making regarding mangroves and the surrounding areas. The relationship between weather and an organism determines the process of evolution and adaptation of a species. The way they relate with their environment defines the dynamics of functional diversity. Any change in weather may result in an ecological impact that disrupts the natural life cycle of organisms. This change in weather conditions can be seen in the Enso cycle, which is an ocean atmospheric event that involves fluctuating ocean temperatures in the tropical Pacific. This change in temperature is large enough that effects can be seen in several places. This cycle has the power to increase primary productivity in our regions, change the dynamics of diseases, and it was found to be related to 21% of all civil conflicts around the world since 1950. There is no way in which humans can prevent the end of the cycle, however governments around the world can develop plans to respond to climatic anomalies and introduce in the education system methods to protect themselves during adverse weather conditions. Pests represent the second most significant cause of species extinction worldwide. Pests cause a decline in functional diversity through poisoning, disease, the destruction of habitat, competition and predation. The task force should consider innovation over invention, improved education and governance and a whole system approach to pest control. The interconnections between systems should be actively considered and solutions sought that address multiple problems at the same time with an emphasis on biomimicry. The aim is to see a decoupling effect in relation to the impact of pests on native flora and fauna. An integrated approach to cane toad control that not only reduces toad numbers but also improves the adaptation skills of native wildlife has been successful. 
Teacher Toads is a program that trains goannas and quolls to avoid eating toads. The animals are given smaller, less toxic toads to eat, which cause illness but not death. Both animals have exhibited a taste aversion response in preceding trials, and this learned trait has even been seen to be transferred to the offspring of toad smart quolls. Haiti is a Caribbean country known for its natural beauty, but gradually the country is becoming a grassland as a result of a history of deforestation. The deforestation began during the colonial period and intensified when woodlands were replaced with coffee plantations starting from 1730. After 50 years, a quarter of the land was coffee plantations. When the Haitian Revolution happened in 1804, the government was forced to export timber throughout the 19th century to pay off an indemnity to France. Forest canopies work as a natural buffer against wind and rain, and the deep roots prevent soil erosion. Once the trees were removed, the remaining forest was susceptible to a harsher abiotic environment, and heavy rains transported the soils and dust downhill clogging riverbeds. With no buffering from natural weather events, the stability of the hillside was further compromised. When the trees were removed, transpiration was unable to take place. Deforestation on this scale meant that formerly forest land was turned to desert. The soils were exposed to increased radiation and drying, and on top of this was the loss of a carbon reservoir, resulting in increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And native species populations and their habitats were lost. The deforestation in Haiti affects the surrounding society. Loss of trees promises to amplify the effect of natural disasters on the peoples and their infrastructure. Studies have found that deforestation is one of the main causes of poverty. It leads to soil degradation, decrease in agricultural yields, water scarcity, and decreases farming income and potentially promotes malnutrition. The results of deforestation have been seen, and action is being taken to tackle poverty. A campaign has been launched with goals of increasing forest cover in 2016, 2026 and 2066 to be 8%, 10% and 29% respectively. If Haiti begins to improve and protect the functional diversity of their woodlands, the quality of the life of the people will improve. Prevention is better than cure as shown in the previous case study on toads. Biomimicry can inspire innovation whereby systems and goods are designed with their future life in mind. Goods would be made either entirely of biological nutrients that can decompose and feed lower trophic levels, or homogeneously of technical nutrients so they can be recycled indefinitely without reduction of grade. This results in optimal use of finite resources, reducing the need for excess extraction and future economic liabilities are avoided. Ongoing progressive maintenance must be written into policies to prevent policy avoidance and eliminate or minimise detrimental economic and environmental impacts. Systems such as mining and town planning can tailor their design after nature when considering aspects such as water purification. It is important to note the implications of extreme weather conditions such as ENSO when making decisions regarding forests that directly affect greenhouse gas there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Selective logging was successful for Wisconsin's Menomini tribe, where lucrative timber exports coincided with a standing feet increase of 130% between 1870 and the early 2000s. Aforestation is preferable in cases such as Haiti. By thinking global and acting local, humanity stands a much better chance at managing functional diversity.